So there's a couple topics that have been going around social media in the past few days that I kind of wanted to talk about. One of them is the talk of a Switch 2. Um, and a lot of these articles are kind of suggesting that if you purchased a Nintendo Switch OLED, well, you made a big mistake because the Nintendo Switch 2 is in production and it will be out in late 22 or early 23. And I've seen a lot of YouTubers actually talk about this as well. Most of them are citing uh, comicbook.com where they cite Nate the Hate who says that he has inside information about a Switch 2 apparently. Now the thing is, is Nate the Hate is a very reliable guy and a an insider of sorts. I am a big fan of his and a lot of the crew that he talks to and uh, gets news through. I think a lot of those guys are very credible, including him. But I have an issue with the Switch 2 being something that's going to be on the docket in the next year. And namely, I think logically we can see where certain YouTubers, and not Nate the Hate, but certain YouTubers have made a killing talking about the Switch Pro for the last like six months. It's all we've seen. I've personally experienced a number of people who were going to buy a Nintendo Switch but held off because, oh, the Switch Pro is a done deal. We're hearing it from many YouTubers and many sources who are saying, look, we have the inside word and it's going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And we find out, no, it's not going to happen. It's a Switch OLED, which is fine, but it's not what they said. It's not the... 4K DLSS, all, you know, super-powered Switch. It's just one with a better screen, which in itself is fantastic. I appreciate my Switch OLED quite a bit, but it's not that. And I'm not saying that these guys had any indication that what they were reporting wasn't true. I think they were reporting what they saw in the news, but I also think they have to take a step back and look at their numbers and maybe not look at logic all the time and I say that with love to these guys but let's look at the Nintendo Switch in itself and let's look at how long a life cycle most consoles have and the standard is about six to seven years before you get a, a, a version two if you will a PlayStation 1 PlayStation 2 those kind of numbers are typically six to seven years we have seen like Nintendo dropped a couple within five years, and those being between the GameCube and the Wii and the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch, and they're sitting at five years between console releases. Now, the thing is about both of those consoles is they were commercial failures. I personally appreciate the GameCube and I like it quite a bit, and I think the Wii U was slept on, and so it's not... Uh, uh, you know, indicative of how good the actual console was, but how well they sold. And if you remember right, when the Wii U came out, there was discussions that Nintendo maybe should think about being a third-party creator and to step away from the console market. That's how bad the Wii U was. But that's not the situation with the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is breaking records over here. And, more importantly for this argument, the Nintendo Switch is still a baby. The Nintendo Switch is only four years old at this moment. And yes, in 2022, it'll be five years, but that's still relatively immature for them to produce another system and, and release it. And one rule about business that you want to know is, yes, always strike while the iron's hot, but never compete with yourself. And the Nintendo Switch's numbers are still going up. They just released the OLED model. I think we're going to see a big growth with that as well. Why would Nintendo be in competition with themselves that doesn't make any sense at all especially when they know that they could still squeeze a little bit more out of the system they probably have another year or two not to mention uh, the pandemic that kind of held things up we also with the oled kind of realized that maybe this chip shortage is a real problem and it's not going away anytime soon because you would think that if they were going to refresh the system, they probably would have updated the, the OLED if they could. But that probably wasn't very efficient or cost effective. So this idea of a more powerful switch coming to the market in a year doesn't really seem to add up. Now, the argument also is third party companies just can't do any more with the switch's limitations. And I don't believe that either. And namely because of this. Nintendo Switch is a different beast than like the PlayStation or the Xbox. And at that same time, it being a different 
creature altogether has allowed for it to have the best-selling games of all time. And yes, of all time. Look at Mario Kart 8. Look at Minecraft. These are old titles that are not graphically intensive, but that's not what the Switch needs. And that's not what its following really goes after. Look, if they gave us a Mario Odyssey 2, we would be happy with it producing the exact same graphics of Mario Odyssey, of Breath of the Wild. We've seen Breath of the Wild 2's graphics. It's it's fine. It's not going to do what PlayStation 5 does, but that's not what we want from the Switch. There's this other factor with the Switch, and for lack of a better term, I'm going to say fun and replayability. That seems to be the most important thing to Nintendo Switch players. And again, I just have to cite the fact that Mario Kart 8 is still outselling most games monthly. Um, the other thing that I would say, if we were going to expect any sort of update or any sort of new console, and this is conjecture, not rumor, not nothing, this is just my own thoughts, I believe that we would see some sort of streaming kind of, uh, I'm not even going say device, but maybe update for the dock, you know, you plug your dock into your Ethernet cable that you now have, and you're able to stream. Maybe think, you know, the uh, PSP Vita to PS4 kind of connection that they had. We might see something like that for more of, like, the home console gamers and that kind of an update. I see that they've kind of pacified a lot of the, if you will, the handheld players with the OLED version and that needing attention with the, the console players. And... I know, I don't like the streaming aspect either, but it would fix a lot of problems with them not having to completely rebuild and update a system that's only four years old. And that way they could address some of the graphical limitations of the system. Uh, but before I go on too long about this, again, that's just conjecture. It's nothing more than my own personal thought of where Nintendo could go and how they could update the graphics if they needed to. But in a lot of ways, I don't think they need to. And I don't think that that's a direction they actually are focused on. But I did want to also talk about the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack that I see a lot of people talk about. And I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings and I don't want to put anyone off or offend anyone when I say that. In a way, I believe that there is maybe a little bit too much complaining. <laughs> I want to state, if you have a working N64, this is not for you. Like, you already have what you need and you're fine. Uh, unless you want it on the go or whatever, that's your own business. But I'm looking at it from somebody who has been recently on the Legend of Zelda bandwagon. I think about four years ago is when I became just the biggest fan of The Legend of Zelda. I never had money as a kid. Uh, to have an N64, and so I missed out on a lot of experiences. Um, my parents just didn't have the money. We had, we had an option. It was the N64, PlayStation 1. I went PlayStation, obviously. But um, looking back, I want to play Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and some of the other N64 games. So I've actually tried to make that happen for myself by purchasing an N64, by purchasing these games. I went out, did all that, and then I ran into a giant roadblock called the Expansion Pack, which I was looking at $100, $180 to find an Expansion Pack, which is insane. I had already spent $40, $50, $60 on on Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, not to mention the $100 plus on an N64. Start adding that money up, and I, I didn't even buy the expansion. I said, I look, this isn't for me. I, I can't even find a, a, a real expansion pack that isn't, like, I believe it was $100, and I just, that was a, a bridge too far for me. I'd already purchased all this stuff. I figure I'll just resell it, get my money back. But when you're looking at it, that's a lot of money. That's four, five hundred dollars to play two Legend of Zelda games on the N64 on a on a pretty outdated system. And Nintendo Switch Online is offering that for fifty dollars a year. That's all I'm saying. Like the cost of it, and and retro gaming is amazing, and I love it, and that whole culture. But at the same time, they have created this giant market which is continued to grow and continued to make a lot of these things expensive. Not to mention what WADA and some of those other places are doing, which is just exploitive. But if they're asking me, 
hey, will you pay an extra 20? I actually have the family plan, so an extra $35 a year to play these N64 games. I'd say yes, easily. It's a, quite a bit cheaper than going the route of actually having to purchase an expansion pack, purchase an N64, purchase the a, a connection because oh it's hard to find a CRT TV it's hard to you know not even hard to find but hard to place like what are you gonna put another TV in your living room just for N64 games like come on we all, we have families we've got you know limitations here um, it's a rather cheap expansion that's all I'm saying and I understand that there's gonna be a number of people who disagree with me and say it's too expensive and that's fine don't don't get it. But I think when you look at the Animal Crossing DLC, you look at the, just the ability to play the Legend of Zelda games alone, not to mention Paper Mario, Banjo-Kazooie, all of these games, which, by the way, guys, not easy to find and definitely not cheap to find. Uh, 40 50 maybe 80 bucks for the cartridge alone if you can find it. Now, I know you might point to something on, you know, on eBay or, or Amazon, but most of the time those are fake. So you're spending a lot of money just for a ROM. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the expansion pack. I just want to talk about that. I really want to talk about the Switch 2 because I think, I don't know, I just think in, in some ways it, it's exploitive of us. And it's something that I really hope I don't hear for the next year of people just going on about Switch 2 rumors. It, it's It's reductive at this point. I, I think that there's enough people who maybe should look at it logically, and um, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Take care.